right, are you guys done messing around? We need to get some work done on this car. Got a bunch of parts, got a, got a good amount of parts, and places to put them. That makes sense. <laughs> let's, uh, I don't know, let's get to work. From right here, come on, from right here, the intake looks perfect. Uh, but I do need to cut things up and make it work. I digress, things showed up. Let's look at things. This is the power steering pump adapter, so we'll be putting that in in a little bit. This is the belt. Uh, there is, right, focus, there's the part number for it. I got it on Amazon, I think, for 15 bucks. So we'll see how that fits. Uh, you know about the fuel pump. This is a Walbro 255 Corvette style filter regulator. Uh, oil filter, oil hose clamps. This is all fuel injection hose. Can you guys see that? It says fuel injection. It is rated for a lot of pressure. I don't remember where it says. 6.9 bar. So what is that? That's three bar is like 43 PSI. So this would be double that. It'll hold all the PSIs we need it to hold. This is the same dipstick that we used on Chris's truck Clifford that he came and picked up the other day. Bummed me out slightly, um, but that thing fit really well, so I'm gonna use it again on this. I'm gonna have to, I might, I don't know. We'll figure something out because it bolts where the blind hole is on the back of the uh, engine. You know what I mean? The bell housing, you know what I mean? I'll show you over here so you guys can know what I mean. Right there, that's where it's supposed to bolt. And uh, Dirty Dingo makes a bracket that comes down here and off of the head and there's some shit there, but you know. We might be able to move it over to this hole or something because the tube will be right here. We'll figure it out. If I have to, I'll make a new bracket. If it comes to it, I'll just order that Dirty Dingo adapter. And then I mentioned in the last video that I was getting the drive shaft through Precision Shaft Technologies. Don't laugh. On eBay, because they sell like predetermined length ones that they'll just it's a super common length, they'll just mass produce them and then ship them out. And here it is, this is how it shows up. I did start to open it, but I haven't completely looked at it yet, I just peeked at it. And the thing that's amusing about that is I was watching one of old Cleeter McSkeeter's videos recently, I think it was with the Mystery Machine van, and for that they said that they were using a Precision Shaft Technologies uh, drive shaft. These guys are out of Florida. Kalidus is obviously in Florida, so I thought that was kind of interesting. So I think this will probably be one of the first things that I throw in, um, because the length should be right. I'm not sure if the U-joints will fit, and if they don't, I'd like to figure that out, or at least know that they're not gonna fit. Um, this does come with 1310 U-joints. This one I got for 160, and they do make a beefier one that comes with 1350 U-joints for like two, 40, I think, or no, it was 215 or 216, that's what it was. Uh, and I almost went with one of those, but it, it would be overkill for this car. 1310s will be fine. This thing, it's not gonna be making all the power in the world. Um, shoot, I just remembered, I was just at Vato Zone and I freaking forgot to get gaskets for the water pump. Gosh darn it, god dang. All right, oh well. That's not a big deal. All right, so I'm gonna lay down and grab my shaft and just start jamming it up in there, see if it fits. Uh, we might have to work a little bit to make it fit. I don't know, we'll find out. Let's see what other puns we can make to get demonetized. Let's get to work. All right, let's see what's in it. So this is about as far as I made it yesterday when I started opening it. Why do boxes always give me trouble? Take this over to the bench. It did say in the description it was gonna be white. You don't usually see white shafts this big, but I mean, I'm pretty pleased with it. So let me go grab the yoke and see if that'll fit. It's not gonna fucking fit, dude. We're gonna need a conversion one, unless it fits over here somehow. Nope. Shitty. Shitty, shitty, fucking shitty. Well, I'm glad I started with this, so just for mock-up purposes, let me throw this thing in here. Yeah, these don't even come close to fitting. 
Okay. Never mind. Never fucking mind that. Alright, so I'm pretty sure these are the same size, so I'm gonna leave that one taped up for now. This one I'm gonna leave untaped so I can test to see if this fits in the rear end. If it does, sweet, we only need one. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to track down two of them and uh, figure out what's going on. So that went less than planned. Let's move on. Man, that's a bummer. I knew that there was a real good possibility of those U-joints not being the right ones, but you know, fingers crossed, but oh well. I'm just gonna take some measurements of everything. Uh, I might actually run up to DTS and Ionia and just, they've got a big ass book with everything. They'll probably have U-joints in stock and then we'll just be done with it. But uh, for now, let's move on to some of the other stuff we got going on. So let's uh, start with the belt. Double check that this actually is the right one. This is the part number that Speed Engineering provides for this power steering pump and alternator uh, bracket. But, uh, I mean, you saw how the drive shaft went. <laughs> so <laughs> let's uh, figure this out. I mean, I'm gonna have to take this off anyway, so I'm just gonna take it off now and get it out of the way. That way everything's nice and easy to get to. And then we'll throw the belt on. That fits real nice. Cool, cool, cool. Next up, let's uh, try to get that power steering pump fitting in and uh, make sure that that's all good. All right, there it is. This is from Dirty Dingo. It was 20 bucks, 19.99 if you're uh, Billy Mays in it. Now is where I would normally take, I don't know if you guys can see anything because I can barely see anything. Now is where I'd normally take this line and screw it into this fitting at the back of the pump, but it doesn't have quite the right angle, so I'm going to have to take it off and bend it a little bit. Luckily, this side's easy to get to, and even more luckily, I cannot find my three-quarter wrench. Oh, come on. Don't be stupid. There we go, stupid. Not on the fucking car. All right, so I think if I just straighten this angle out right here, it should fit. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on it in the vise. I was just about to say it's starting to turn. That might be good. Let's go test fit it. All right, so I got it bent the right way, and uh, I just started throwing it in there. Power steering lines are done. Uh, I had to redo the uh, return line here, like the low pressure side. So if it leaks, I'm not 100% sure that that's got a good seal. So if it leaks, it'll probably be from there, but I think it'll work. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is gap, so it's not touching the control arm there, so we're good there. All right, let's move on to something else. Like I said, I forgot water pump gasket, so we can't do that yet. I think I'm gonna have to cut the front springs because there's not gonna be a ton more weight on the front end and there's still quite a bit of a gap there, but that'll be the last thing that we probably do, or at least one of the last things. I'm not going to put the spark plugs in yet because I still have to uh, do the converter bolts. So it'll be a lot easier to roll the engine over without the plugs in, of course. So I'm gonna hold off on those. I could start plugging in some of the wiring and doing that. And I could start running the fuel lines and stuff like that. And I could also put the oil filter and oil in it. That way it's not sitting completely dry. And uh, we'll be able to check for leaks too. There shouldn't be any leaks. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that before I get too much further. Alright, 
oil's in, dipstick is in, that's all good, filter's on, of course. I think now I'm going to move on to trying to fight to get these, uh, these transmission dipstick in. Hopefully it shouldn't be too bad, but that is normally something you like to put in before the transmission's all the way in place. All right, so like I said earlier, this is the same one that we used on Chris's uh, truck. So I know it's pretty decent quality. And honestly, we're real close already. Might have to go underneath and uh, get it right. So the transmission dipstick tube is in. I did have to modify the bracket a little bit, which was just flattening it out and drilling another hole, but everything there is gonna work out perfectly. It'll obviously be under the hood, so that's sweet. I'm just gonna bolt that in and then we're done with that. We'll move on to something else. All right, now that that's done, let's move on to tackling the fuel system, or at least coming up with a plan for it, because I know how I want to do it, but I haven't looked at everything yet. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. This is a stock F-body uh, injector rail setup. What I would like to do is take this off and turn it around, right? Are you following me? Are you following me? It's turned around. We'll remove this little like push lock deal here. Right here is the stock fuel line for what was the carburetor. This is a 3 8 line. So what I'm thinking is I'll undo the little clip right here. I'll bend this up and then I just need a small piece of rubber to go here. Don't laugh at rubber, it's not that funny. A small piece of rubber here. I could run the uh, line along the firewall and then have the hose come out here, but this is already at an angle. I don't know if I could get away with bending this to a 90. If I can, sweet, but I, don't, I really don't want to break anything. And then once that's connected, the fuel pump and the regulator and everything will be back here for the most part. All right, so here's the pump, and here, here is the regulator and filter. It does both. What we're gonna do is, as close to the fuel tank as reasonably possible, we're going to have a line going to the pump. I'm pretty sure that this is gonna have to be afterward, after the pump. I'll uh, double check that, because it'd be nice to have the filter before the pump so that anything in the tank doesn't, doesn't fuck the pump up, but I think these ones might have to be after the pump. I'll double check that, but. So, like, let's say this is the gas tank, as close as we can get to it, uh, high pressure hose to the pump, high pressure hose from the pump to the filter, and then we'll do the 5 sixteenths return up to the return on the tank. Or if there isn't a return, I'll figure something else out for that in a bit. I'm thinking that with this being an 80, there might be a provision for a return, but I don't know just yet. Um, and then from here, we'll go from the filter into the stock hard line and then from the hard line all the way up. That way there's very little rubber hose actually on the fuel system because I don't like running a ton of it if I don't have to. Whether or not that's gonna work, I don't know just yet, but that is the plan. Okay, so let me see if you guys can see what I'm seeing. Right here on the tank is the two lines. This one that my finger's on looks like it's about 5 16 I don't know if it was originally a return line. It might have been something for emissions or or whatever, because this car was built in California. And then this top one it looks like just a normal 3 8 uh, fuel line. And this is a rubber section, the only rubber section I've found so far, to be honest. So what I'm thinking is I'll take these two pieces out and I'll insert the uh, pump and everything in there. I mean, I'll route it somewhere else so that I'm not like mounting it to the tank. Might be able to get it on this fuel rail, or uh, this frame rail here. But that's kind of my plan. I do want to do a little bit of research uh, first to make sure that that will work as a return because I'd hate for it to, I don't know, just not work or it comes out somewhere stupid or it turns out that that's the only vent for the gas tank for whatever reason. But it looks like everything else for the fuel system is gonna work just fine, but I just want to research that a little bit more for just peace of mind. That way I know if it's not gonna work, I can come up with something else. So I think that's probably gonna do it for today's video. We got. A pretty good amount done really I mean it's always hard with like this part of the build because there's always just a bunch of stupid little things that you're not really gonna be thinking about like throttle cable bracket right here the throttle cable that I got actually bolts to the firewall so there's just stuff like that and forgetting the water pump gasket just little things like that that don't make for a good video so hopefully if things go right and I'm feeling ambitious. Maybe the next time you see the car, we'll actually be really close on it. But that is going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll see you next time.